It may be spring everywhere in the United States, but for Stampin' Up, we are about to celebrate the new year. Hi, I'm Linda Bartolucci. Welcome back to Ink Stamp and Scrap. Thanks so much for checking out my video today. This time of year, Stampin' Up is about to launch its new annual catalog, and that is exciting enough as it is. But I have so many more things to share with you. This year, unlike most, they are not only launching five new ink colors, which we do every year, but they're also going to shake up the 40 base colors. And we won't know for a couple more days what that's gonna look like, but I'm guessing somewhere between 11 and 15 colors will go away and be replaced by either returning or brand new colors that we've never seen. I can't wait to share with you all the details. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you know when I post my next video. All right, let me share a little bit more about how today's project is going to work for you. Not only am I sharing a new fun fold, but I'm also sharing a piece of an upcoming class with you. It's not going to be this specific fun fold or this specific bundle, but I am going to be launching bundle-based classes starting in April, and they will include the following, a technique card, a fun fold card, a quick card, and a 3D card. You will get all of those things every month. Many of you have given me feedback that these are the kind of cards that you'd like to learn how to make and I am happy to show you how. Today I have an easel card, which is a fun fold, and we are going to use the Sweet Citrus Hybrid Bundle. I will show you all about that. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is introduce the star of the show, which is the Sweet Citrus Bundle. There's a lot to this one. It's a little different than the usual bundle you're used to seeing. This is the card that we're gonna to make today. It's an easel card. And you can see that all the fruit not only is stamped, die cut, but it's also embossed. And I could do that in just two steps, which is fantastic. And then this is the little coordinating envelope here. We're gonna make all of that together, but first let me walk through how this hybrid bundle works. So when you open it up, when it comes to you from Stampin' Up, it's gonna ship as a folder, the dies will be in their own separate case, and then the stamps will come. All of these are already mounted on blocks for me so that I can create the card for you. I What I do is I put this die sleeve in the back so I can remember how many dies I need and I can quickly count to make sure that I have the right number. One thing I wanna point out real quick is this is so nice that they do this because then you can stamp multiples of the single flower, the triple flower, or the leaves and cut them out much faster using the dies. That's why they did that. You're not missing any stamps. It's so that you can cut faster. But let me show you the star of the show. The way that this works, and I'm gonna show you one more again after I stamp, but I just wanna preview this for you. This die actually goes right inside of this folder. Let me get it lined up correctly. And you can feel it kind of get into the right place. It's The die is not gonna move anymore. And because this is a 3D embossing folder, I can slide this right through my embossing machine just like this. Obviously, with a piece of stamped cardstock underneath, which I'm gonna show you in a moment, but I just wanted to show you, this is what makes it a hybrid folder, which is what the way they classify it when you look at it um, in my online store, which is linked below, or in a paper catalog. All right, so let's get to stamping and creating this fun easel card, and I will show you how to use this. The first step is going to be to start with a four and a quarter by 11 piece of Daffodil Delight cardstock, and that is just a normal card size, but we are going to score it a little differently to get the folds the way we want. So the first score is gonna be at five and a half inches. Then the next score is going to be at four and a quarter inches. And the last score is going to be, I'm going to make sure you can see this. I'm just going to kind of fold this. This is the way it's going to go together. I'm going to go from the bottom of the four and a quarter score up to the point of the card. And it's really easy to do in a trimmer like this. So all I'm going to do is this is my 
cutting or scoring well. I'm going to put the score here and then I'm going to put the tip here. So both of them are in the well, just like that. And then I'm going to slide it. And the other um, trick when you're doing this is to make sure the blade starts in the center of the project. If it starts up here, sometimes it tends to catch the tip and you don't want that to happen. You want to get the scoring going, the score going before you slide it back across the tip and then it won't pull it. And there we go. All right, so that's all we need our trimmer for. So now I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm gonna burnish all of these folds. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fold it in half on that five and a half score, and I'm gonna burnish that. Then I'm gonna fold it back on itself at the four and a quarter score. And last but not least, I'm gonna fold the top triangle, you can see I've got my score right here, down on to the bottom triangle. And there we go. So the way this is going to display is just like this. Let me bring in the actual card one more time. Oops, wait, there it is. So you can see how this compares. So the ending product is just like that. So that's where we're going with this. All right, so the next step is to get this mechanism together. The first thing I'm gonna do is attach these two to make sure that they stay together. I like to use tear and tape for this part. You could certainly use liquid glue, but you definitely need to leave it for a couple of minutes to let it set up because you don't want it to pull apart when you're adding all the other layers to your card. So, if I was not doing this as a video, I might very well use liquid glue in this step, but since I want to make sure it's stuck together forever right away, I'm using tear and tape. All right, so again, I'm just going to fold this over, and now I have, there we go, I have this section, which is one and a quarter inches, which will become important eventually. And then this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. That's how big that square is. And we've got our triangle there. All right, let's stamp our grapefruits together. And then I can show you how that hybrid folder really works. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Flirty Flamingo ink pad and my Daffodil Delight ink pad. I am going to grab the outside of the grapefruits. I'm gonna turn this this way. And I'm just gonna, because this is a big stamp, I'm gonna walk it across and just make sure I got ink everywhere. Hang on, I'm gonna show you. Here we go. All right, so what you want to keep in mind is the way that this is going to line up. This is the one thing that, the little extra step when you're going to stamp. So in order to put your paper in the right way, what you want to do is you want the lemon and then the round one. Well, I'm just calling that a lemon because it looks like it. it could be a lime. But anyway, lemon lime and then the flat slice kind of this way on your, on your stamping surface so that... So sort of this way, so that when you put this in, it actually fits into the folder. So I wanna make sure that it's stamping this way. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Three, two, one. All right, and now I can do the inside. So I'm gonna take the inside of the fruit, I'll move that out of my way, I'll close it in a second, and Sorry for the banging, it's a little sticky. Now what I'm gonna do, so what I found is I look at these two points and then I kind of look over here and that seems to line it all up for me. It's great that they did it this way so that you can use the hybrid folder and get all your fruit, but it does take a little bit of practice. I would definitely, if this is a bundle that you're going to grab, I would definitely try it on scratch paper a couple times and get used to where your eye likes to line it up. I can tell you, like I said, that's how my eye lines it up, but you do you. 
All right, there we go. So that looks great. I'm super happy with my grapefruit. I definitely can add my leaves at the bottom in a moment, but I wanna show you how that lines up. So now we're gonna grab our folder again. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of put that kind of where it goes. And we're gonna come back to this. We're going to line up the die and the stamp. And do you see what I mean? This is why I, I kind of stamped it sort of the way in the direction of the, the way the die is going and the way the folder's going. So now my cardstock, even though it hangs out down here, I don't care, but it's gonna go through my die cutting machine perfectly. So now I can put it through on my 3D embossing folder setting and they're all gonna come out just like this, embossed and cut all at once. It's perfect, it's so easy and I just love it. So what I would do after I run this through, since I've already taken the time to do that, is I would just stamp my leaves down here and also cut those out. And then we can get to assembling this card. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing and I'm gonna get right back to finishing that card. But I just wanted to pop in here and ask you to click that like button if you're enjoying what you're seeing. It really does help a small channel like mine. All right, let's see how this card gets finished. What I'm gonna show you now is not what I did on this card, but what we'll do going forward is how it will look like this is one piece of Flirty Flamingo cardstock that went through the folder. Let me show you what I mean. This time for this card, I already, I did the embossing, but what I did is I cut the four by four piece and the one by four piece, but I ran them through the embossing folder together so that I would have a cohesive embossed image to put on my card, which is what we're going to do now. So you're gonna cut it four by four and one by four, and then you're gonna run it through together like this so that you get a cohesive image to add to the front of your card. So what I'm gonna do is take my four and a quarter piece of Daffodil Delight, and that's gonna be my card front, then I'm going to layer this on top, which is a four by four, and then we will add this, nope, we'll do it the right way. <laughs> we'll add this just like that to the card. So let's get that together. For this purpose, for this stuff, I'm going to need my liquid glue, and I'm just gonna use my detailed jar or dispenser. If this is something that you'd like to have a little more control over your liquid glue, you can find this linked below in my Amazon shop. It is an affiliate link, but the price is the same for you as it is for me. So I'm just gonna kind of put this all over and then I'm going to layer it on my four and a quarter by four and a quarter daffodil. Then I'm going to layer, I'm just gonna, wait, this is the way this goes, right? This goes, okay, this way. All right, so it goes just like that. So I'm gonna layer this one on the ed, or the section of the card that we already put together with tear and tape. And then I'm going to add this to the card very carefully. You gotta, Make sure that you only attach that square to the bottom rectangle. That's how you get your easel fold. All right, so we have that one there. I'm gonna bring in my tear and tape again. I could use the liquid glue, but just so nothing gets where I don't want it to be and this stays and it's a dry, tight seal right away, I'm just gonna use my tear and tape. So I'm gonna put three pieces along the edges and then I'm just gonna put one in the middle here. Now the daffodil, this layer right here is four and a quarter by four and a quarter and so is this. So all we're doing, oh, well actually, no, not all we're doing. We're gonna take the release paper off, otherwise it's not going to stick. 
And then all we're going to do is stack these two together so that they meet up, but they'll only be attached at the bottom. All right, so now we should be able, you can see now, they'll see the lemons follow, which is just awesome. And I'm putting this right up against the score and then it should come right across. There we go. Okay. So now this looks a lot more cohesive than the last one. And we still have our cool mechanism. Now it's not gonna stay up yet, but we're getting there. Now let's add a little bit of decor to the front. So I'm gonna add a full grapefruit, a half grapefruit, and kind of a side sliced grapefruit. I have some leaves that I have stamped and die cut, so we're gonna add those as well. But first we need our greeting. Let's do that. I love the phrases that are in this stamp set. They're really happy and cheerful. So if you need to brighten someone's day, this is definitely a stamp set that you're gonna enjoy using. This says, enjoy the sweet things in life. So I'm gonna stamp this on a three quarter inch strip of basic white. And then I'm just gonna flag the end with my paper snips. There's a little more than I want here, so I'm gonna trim it off. Then I'm gonna flag it, cut it in the middle, and then cut up from either corner there we go. Get that little guy out. There we go. I think that's fine. So we'll move this over and now we can decorate the front. We need lots of dimensionals for the front of this card. Here we go. So I'm gonna put four along this and then I'm going to use the dimensionals to attach the leaves to the fruit and then I'm gonna use a couple more just to finish off my fruit display. We'll call it that. So what I'm showing you today is a fun fold. It's an easel card. This is just one of the cards that you'll find in the upcoming classes that I will be starting to share with you in the latter part of April. Like I said in the beginning, this is a big week for Stampin' Up! And the reason that I wanted to share this with you, and I'm gonna have a couple of more videos coming out that show the other components of every class, is so that you can refer back and decide if that's something that you would enjoy. But each class is going to have a fun fold, a technique, a quick card, and a 3D element. My plan is that every month we will pick a different bundle, and that's what the class will be based on. And all four projects will be included. I will not repeat the folds or the techniques or the quick card for that matter. So you will, even if you don't invest in the bundle that I choose to highlight that month, you will still learn quite a bit by having a fun fold that you can try with the products that you already have and also a technique that you can try with the products that you already have. You can see I used a dimensional to anchor my leaves. I don't even know if this time I'm going to use all three. We'll see. So I like how that looks. I don't want it to be, oh, that's okay. I want the, I want to make sure that the leaf doesn't hang over because I don't want it to mess up the mechanism. I think I could do one like that. So let's do that. Let's bring my dimensionals back in. There we go. All right. Now we've got the whole front done and we're ready to do the inside. You certainly don't have to do it in this order. You can, um, all your stamping and then all your assembling. I just decided to do it this way today. All right. For this one, what we're going to do, you can see right here, we're going to stamp our greeting, sending you a big squeeze, and then we're gonna add, actually this time we're gonna add a different piece of fruit, but this is what makes it the easel. This is what makes it displayable. So let me show you how these stamps go together. And 
And then we're gonna stamp our flowers. Whoever, whatever artist designed this bundle, this stamp set especially, really took some care to think through how to make it really easy to work with because I love how the inside of these flowers work. You have this one big dot right here and that's what makes the center of the two big flowers. <laughs> They're not really that big, but bigger than the other two. And then you have a double dot that could go either, it, it does work either way. So don't worry about the right and the left, just line them up into the center. And, and there we go. All right, oops, missed a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Now we're going to take a little bit of glue, go around the edge, fill in the middle and put it right inside. This white, basic white measures four by four, so it will fit in here very nicely. And now what I can do is take my open grapefruit slice and I'm gonna put it right here to support the card. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put my dimensionals on but not take the release paper off. I want to put them towards the top of the fruit so that it's got a lot of strength to backstop this. And then I can just add one for balance towards the back. The reason I didn't take the release tape off is I want to make sure that it goes where I can get the front of the card to lock on this, but I take up as little room as possible so I can write my greeting. And I think that works there. If I moved this, I could certainly give, make this higher, but if I do that, then I'm over here and it's a little hard to write your greeting. So I'm gonna stay tucked in the corner. It still gives me the effect that I want. I've got my easel going and this is where it's gonna go. So I'm just gonna tuck it right there I think that's plenty of support for the card. So let's take our release paper off. Oh, they're sticking. All right. So now I'm gonna go right into the corner here. Make sure, yep. Oh, hang on. It's hanging over the card itself a little bit. So I want to make sure I'm inside of, yeah, I'm inside the um, the daffodil card. And there we go. We have our mech, we have our stand. So it's a cute easel card, super easy to make. This would be the kind of card that would be featured in the upcoming bundles classes that will start in the later part of April. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this easel card and that you'll try it yourself very soon. I'm excited to share the other three projects that would make up the Sweet Citrus class. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you know the next time I post a video. Have a great day.